it was a very disturbing weekend, you might have noticed. We're milliseconds and millimeters from a very different outcome and a very different conversation we'd be having in our country today. But if you keep turning up the heat on the pot of boiling water, you can't at least be surprised when, when the water boils over. A common denominator when it came to this assassination attempt is America's fascination and obsession with owning guns. 20-year-old lone wolf white whack job with easy access to a gun. Do we need men? <laughs> Most answered very quickly, no. So why do you think that is? Because men are useless. I'm simply heartbroken for the family of Corey Comfortori, a volunteer fire chief, a father, a husband who lost his life shielding his family simply for going to a political rally. Hey fam, welcome and welcome back to One and Done. So much in the news today after the aftermath of the Trump assassination attempt. Is the man upstairs responsible for dishing out this miracle? Now in this video, we're going to be watching the view, seeing their reactions, their response. Have they changed their tune? Have they softened on Donald Trump? Keep an eye out for a couple of videos I have coming up. One of them is uh, Rudy Giuliani, who has been interviewed by Piers Morgan. And Giuliani paints a fantastic picture of Donald Trump's qualities in regards to being a leader. And not only a leader, but a fearless leader. And of course, the other huge news, JD Vance has filled the VP spot. Now, before we dive into this video, don't forget to hit that like, smash the subscribe and ring the notification bell. And let's roll that tape. It was a very disturbing weekend, you might have noticed, of political violence when a would-be assassin narrowly missed former President Trump during a Pennsylvania rally. In case you haven't seen this, watch it. Take a look at what happened. Get down, get down, get down, get down. Shooters down. Are we good to move? We're clear. We're clear. Watch out. Wait, 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 wait. Now, that is just a miracle. Everyone's calling it a touch or the hand of God. No matter which way you look at it, a centimeter either way, Donald Trump would no longer be with us. And the conversation, the rhetoric and everything would be on another level, maybe never seen before. Now, the mainstream liberal media, they do have to take some responsibility for the heat being turned up in politics. Now, Pierce Morgan did a video. He interviewed Ben Shapiro and made a couple of great points and showed a fantastic reel of the mainstream liberal media participating in the propaganda push about Donald Trump. In the New Republic, six days before this assassination attempt, ran a cover image yeah. of Donald Trump mashed up with Adolf Hitler. Like two days before this assassination attempt, the president of the United States, Joe Biden, said that the American people want a president, not a dictator. When you say that kind of stuff over and over and over, again, the only person responsible for an assassination attempt is the prospective assassin. But if you keep turning up the heat on the pot of boiling water, you can't at least be surprised when, when the water boils over. Right. I mean, I've got a mashup here of people on the left uh, calling Trump Hitler. Let's take a look. Many are openly comparing Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler. Trump's been compared to the German dictator by some throughout his presidential campaign. Is Donald Trump really a Fascist? Maria Chappelle Nadal posted this picture to Twitter yesterday. It appears to compare Donald Trump to Hitler. Former President Trump doubles down on a phrase many say he borrowed from Hitler. President Fantasyland decided to take a page out of Adolf Hitler's playbook last week. Yes, Donald Trump took his Hitler cosplay to the next level. Do you want to clear the air because you think you're being unfavorably compared to Donald Trump? A unified Reich? That's Hitler's language. That's not America's. New York's Daily News ran this front page earlier this week. Trump is Hitler. According to the Washington Post, Trump has long toyed with the language of fascists. Former President Donald Trump allegedly praised Adolf Hitler, saying the Nazi leader had, quote, done some good things. Now that you've seen that, that's all you need to see. That tells you the whole story. That turned the heat up. Now, the crazy thing is these people claim that Donald Trump's Hitler he doesn't like democracy and he will never leave. So they make these horrific claims that he is Adolf Hitler or like Adolf Hitler. And then in the other breath, they're wishing him a speedy recovery. Now they either don't believe that, that he was Hitler, or they don't want him a speedy recovery. Maybe both things can be true at once. But let's see if Anna Navarra has some words from her heart. I'm, I'm very happy Donald Trump is safe. Full stop, period. And I condemn all forms of political violence, 
I'm simply heartbroken for the family of Corey Compertori, a volunteer fire chief, a father, a husband who lost his life shielding his family simply for going to a political rally. Yeah, so surprisingly there she, well, she had to read it. She couldn't speak from her heart, but some heartfelt words about Donald Trump. And then she talked about this hero that put himself in the crossfires to save his wife and daughter. Now, most people that live in reality would say that is what a man does. That is what a father does. He's willing to sacrifice his own life to save his wife and kids. But let's have a look at what The View really think, and in particular, Anna Navarra, of whether and how men are useful or useless. Do we need men? <laughs> Most answered very quickly, no. <laughs> and only one said she thought women needed a man in their lives, only one. But when men were asked a similar question, do we need women? Most of them said yes. <laughs> so why do you think that is? Because men are useless. <laughs> I mean, love it. And by the way, wow. I want I to differentiate between straight men and gay men, because I think I, I would die without gay men. Nobody can gossip <laughs> like gay men. Nobody can help you accessorize like gay men. Nobody can help you... Uh, from keep you from doing harm to your to yourself uh, like gay men and this is the problem with daytime television for decades they've been eroding the relationship between men and women husbands and wives the nuclear family and then they wonder why have we have this outbreak of men stepping aside and let letting women be attacked because it's not worth their trouble getting involved First and foremost, I want to say thank God that the former president's okay. Um, I applaud Secret Service. Listen, there's going to be some postmortems on what went wrong, but those who rushed the stage to make sure he was okay, because mm -hmm. we're milliseconds and millimeters from a very different outcome and a very different conversation we'd be having in our country today. Um, I think it's a moment for reflection on the tone and tenor of our politics. And one thing that is fundamentally American is the right to criticize policies. It is also our right to criticize the character of our politicians but the way in which we do it matters. And we live in an era where escalatory rhetoric and saying the most damning and most inciting thing oftentimes is what's rewarded. And I think it's incumbent on all of us to just check how we engage. Now, just recently, she has been talking a lot more common sense. The other day, she even said she couldn't bring herself to vote for uh, Joe Biden because of how much he's deteriorated and she's extremely worried about foreign policy and his role in it. And then looking to the fact that we live in the era of information warfare. On our phones, there are algorithms that are pumping to us information every day made, meant to make us hate our fellow Americans. Our foreign adversaries are on our social media. They're, they're putting information to validate our worst assumptions about fellow Americans. We can have different political viewpoints in this country, and we can still respect each other and respect each other's right to different opinions and come together as a country because the way you defeat America, it's not with bombs, it's not with missiles, it's tearing us apart from what within. If you care about democracy, listen more, say less. Once again, I can't really argue with what she had to say there. It's the easiest way to infiltrate your enemy in this modern time is to go through social media and have influence. Now, it doesn't take long for the view to get back to their normal shtick. What was this again? It was, you know, a 20-year-old lone wolf, white, whack job with easy access to a gun. And we have to have a conversation about that because it wasn't a drag queen. It wasn't an immigrant. It wasn't a pissed off liberal woman. This is, and this keeps happening. And we need to react, not as left or right, not as Republicans or Democrats. We need to react as Americans. All right. And we need to ask better. They always bring it back to race, which is absolutely crazy. Why even bring that up? The 109 people that got shot in Chicago, the police and FBI and whoever else, would not release the race, nationality, ethnicity of the shooters. Now we know for a fact that when it comes to gun crimes and on a per capita basis, whites aren't at the top of the list. Now you guys can go and look at those statistics for yourself, but these mainstream liberal media, they keep pushing nonsense. Now, speaking of nonsense, the queen of nonsense herself. But when you look at the stats, political violence has reached new heights in this country. Um, the Brennan Center for Justice at, at NYU just released a report in January that found it was not just well-known politicians um, who have faced more threats. 43% of state legislators and 18% of local office holders are saying that they have received threats. Then Robert Pate, he's a political scientist, very well known out of the University of Chicago, conducted a nationwide poll, right, 
on the topic just last month. 10% of those surveyed said that the use of force is justified to prevent Donald Trump from becoming president. A third of those who gave that answer said they also owned a gun. Then 7% of those surveyed said they support force to restore Trump to the presidency. Half of them said they owned guns. I love how she cherry picks statistics. Uh, obviously something's coming. <laughs> Let's have a look. So I know everybody always says it's too soon to talk about guns and that we should, because there has been uh, a, a terrible death of a father of two, um, that we should, thoughts and prayers should be where we go. Mm -hmm. I say no. I say now is the time to talk about the common denominator when it came to this assassination attempt is America's fascination and obsession with owning guns. And <laughs> it just, that's, that's the truth. Um, and but I'd like to guns. think- they're, they're rifles. They're AR-15s and, and bump rifles. stocks. And, and the Supreme Court just found that it's fine yeah. to have bump stocks. So I knew there was going to be some other agenda behind the statistics that she was reading out. I thought, well, she's finally done some homework. But reality is people that want to commit crimes, whether they be gangs or individuals, they don't worry about getting permits. They don't worry about following legislation. Oh, before I go out and assassinate the president, what I'm going to do is make sure that my gun license is in order. That is ludicrous. Now, I used to be against guns, but I sort of understand in America why they have guns. Now, if the criminals have unlimited access to guns and weaponry, why shouldn't nonviolent citizens be able to have that privilege to protect their families? Someone breaks into the house and they've got a gun and you don't have one, it's game over. Now, you can wait 35, 40 minutes for the cops to come, but hey, guess what? Rigor mortis has already set in. But she's going to continue. She's going to be asking for the ban of guns. And so I'd like to think that the issue of gun control would resonate now more. And um, but rather than that, I think what's going to happen is we're going to have more of this rhetoric of had there only been more good guys with guns, um, this may not have happened. And, and, and so well, the Secret I, Service had guns. They had guns. Those are and, the good guys. And so but my my guess is they're going to say the Secret Service screwed up. There were other people with guns. They and did. I think that gun ownership will probably, because of this event, go up in this country instead of going down. And that is my fear. I think we need to have an honest and real conversation about real gun control legislation. OK, uh, I don't think she wants a real honest conversation. She just loves spinning her narrative and she thinks she's quite smart and quite intelligent. But her argument's quite dumb. And yes, the Secret Service stuffed up big time on a number of fronts, first of all before the day even happened. What's with the DEI hires? Why is there a woman right in the firing line two foot shorter than Donald Trump? Why is she even in the Secret Service? Now this has gone viral all over the internet. And the second thing is that I saw these women couldn't even get their guns in and out of their holsters. They were fumbling and just crazy. You need the best person available on the job to protect the president or whoever they're there to protect. By being two foot shorter, automatically you're putting this guy at risk. Now, secondly, how the hell did that shooter get up there in the first place? Apparently there was a ladder going to the top of the roof. And then thirdly, this crazy protocol, apparently you can't fire at some guy that comes up on the roof, crawling army style on the roof. You can't fire at him unless he's firing first. It only takes one bullet. Now, I don't care if this guy goes up there and he's got an ice cream cone. He's licking ice cream watching. That's a suspicious place to be licking ice cream. Take him out. When you come to this event, you know what it is. You know that there's a high possibility that someone's there for nefarious reasons. You're licking an ice cream on that roof, take him out. You're taking photos on that roof, take him out. You're doing the Mexican wave on that roof, take him out. Millions of people have voted for this guy. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been raised for this guy. And then some random comes up on the roof? Hell no. Some random that's gonna come and change you know, the elections for not only the US, but possibly have an impact worldwide because he's up there. He wants to get a better vantage point. Hell nah. Now, like I said, this was an absolute miracle. I'm doing another video where Rudy Giuliani, I think, beautifully sums up who Donald Trump is and what he's about. And I got to say, you got to believe in miracles because this was an absolute miracle that Donald Trump survived that assassination attempt. Let me know what you think. Is the view still clueless? Have they played a role? Have they played a part with their rhetoric in turning the temperature up 
in regards to politics? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like, smash the subscribe, ring the notification bell, and I'll catch you in the next video.